Originally, this routine was called Comedy Writing Techniques, about all the ridiculous things I have to do to write comedy. Personally, I find writing comedy to be torture, but then I realized if comedy is torture, maybe torture is comedy. Now, of course, when I speak of torture, we know I am strictly and solely discussing the torture of the super wealthy, the ruling class, the corporate leadership, an occasional reactionary who needs manners, the 1%, the bourgeoisie, major financiers, the super rich, and anyone of that sort I may have missed. Every eight minutes, an American dies from lack of health care. So every eight minutes, I think about torturing the wealthy. Private health care is torture. The housing market, now that's torture. Every 10 seconds, a third world child dies in starvation totally unnecessarily due to the artificial scarcity of global capitalism. The world has enough food. And in fact, each country has enough food, but only some people get it. That's torture for the starving children. It happens every 10 seconds. So I think about torturing the wealthy every 10 seconds. We all know we're trapped in a medieval corporate dark age. So lonely, escape it by getting a little medieval ourselves. Only way out is through. So it's time for a witch hunt. It's time for a medieval inquisition against the super wealthy. When in Rome, do as the Romans. Now medieval torture is the best because it's so mechanical. They literally had something called the head crusher where you turn a crank and it slowly crushes someone's head. Ancient torture is more about just ripping people in half, lots of pain, but over soon. Medieval torture is more about engineering. You crank the rack, you crank the thumb screws, they would draw and quarter you, tie each limb to a different horse and make them all run in opposite directions. The medievals were really into using metal objects for torture. So the pair of anguish was stuck in your mouth and slowly widened with a crank till it broke your jaws and teeth. I'm having trouble hearing you, Mr. Trump, don't talk with your mouth full. The knee splitter was a pair of metal teeth arranged like a guillotine, slowly cranked together until they split your knees. The nice slow cranking gives the ruling class a lot of time to think about how it should have reorganized society for the benefit of all people centuries ago, instead of wasting everyone's time by forcing the people to reorganize society like they should have. With the iron comb, they would take a fine metal comb used for textile manufacturing and just go to town with it on your body. It's good for scraping off the self-congratulatory pride of the super rich. Now, some of it was abstract. The strapado was a medieval torture where they would rig you up so your hands were behind your back, but you were hanging by your wrists to wreck your shoulders. It would be poetic to break the corporate leadership under its own weight. Now, torture can get exhausting, so you need to pace yourself and take breaks. Just drag the super rich into stone dungeons with metal chains, chain them to the wall, leave them there to lose a little weight. Let them wallow in their own filth and excrement, then come back for more when we're bored and refreshed. They're not going anywhere. But the torture with metal objects was best when the metal was heated up to a nice glowing orange. Chapo Trap House talks about getting grill pilled, tuning out politics, relaxing, cooking on your grill. Now, uh, a lot of millennials can't afford a grill, so I don't know what they're on, but in medieval torture, the gridiron was a giant metal grill, which they would stick in the flames before sticking it on you. Sometimes they oiled you up first to make sure you got the point. Hashtag grill pill. Yeah. Crocodile shears are a little clamp made of hot irons designed to cut off your Johnson, like a miniature guillotine for your dick, with the added benefit of high temperature for cauterization and sterilization. For some reason, this one feels designed for Elon Musk. In the Catholic Church, they have a sprinkling rod to splash holy water on people. In medieval torture, they had the lead sprinkler, which lets, lets you sprinkle molten metal onto someone. Spare the rod, spoil the child? No. Spare the sprinkling rod, spoil the major bankers. In rat torture, they get a metal bucket of rats, stick it against you, and heat up the bucket, so the only way the rats could escape was through you. Personally, I prefer the rat torture in the book 1984, where there are a bunch of rats behind a metal grid that they slowly move toward you. But either of these would be most appropriate for the banking executives who generally behave like rats. For the super wealthy, we have to bring back burning at the stake, like the Inquisition. But the Roman candle variation where you slather them in tar so the fire burns as long and slow as possible. We want everyone to understand to never do anything like what the super rich have been doing ever again. It's not enough to see it, we need people to smell it because smell is closely connected to memory. There's the obvious option of making the super rich fight in Roman gladiator fights. It seems for the benefit of the people. But the funniest of all torture is the Roman Pona Culi. 
where they put you in a bag and throw you into the water. But a variety of wild animals are in the bag with you, specifically a rooster, a dog, a monkey, and a snake. Sounds like something they would do on Jackass. Now, I thought I was a creative genius to include this in a comedy routine, but apparently George Carlin already did. I watched it, and it was so old school, he was saying things like, Oh, the dog is fighting with the monkey, the monkey's fighting with the snake. But my contribution is that Pona Kula is what we should do to the 1%. So instead of animals, we can put the top five officers of each major corporation in a bag, throw them in the water, and just see what they do. We have to get footage of all of this for the people who can't be there in person. And so future generations who never had to live under capitalism know what we had to do. My regime will base its hierarchy on how much of this footage people watch. Refusing to watch the broadcast will be considered un-American disloyalty. Did you watch the broadcast? You didn't, did you? I can see the treason in your face. So capitalism, I think, is literal torture for the majority of the population. The situationist Jean-Pierre Voyer wrote, Misery is, in fact, the sole real property of the unhappy public. In this sense, misery is common, communal, but only secretly so, not publicly. So people are mentally repressing the physical pain we have to block out just to survive capitalism. Our entire lives revolve around distracting media, beliefs, and chemicals to repress the pain for now. It jumps around different spots in your body as your subconscious tries to hide it from you. We smile and fake it like the pain is something we don't want our bosses or customers to see, and deny it even to ourselves, but the mental denial won't prevent our eventual organ failure. Our faces scrunched up in false positivity? God, we are bullshit. Besides, it's not like modern governments aren't engaged in torture themselves. Modern torture is great for how abstract it can be. Modern torture can be stress positions, or it can be reminding you that Liberty Mutual lets you customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Sometimes torture is just having to hear a corporate motto over and over between each YouTube video. Go for Grubhub. Go for Grubhub. I want to put the leader of Grubhub in a room where that phrase is all they hear endlessly on repeat like they do to all of us. But modern torture is about finesse. A facial hold is when you just literally grab someone by the face, by their nose or their ears, and just mess with them. Embarrassment is the key to modern torture. We gotta make the super wealthy feel like a bunch of big dorks, because they are. But they forget they are. And they need to be reminded or they get big ideas and exploit and oppress the global population. My favorite CIA torture is called walling. Like a wall turned into a verb. It's designed specifically for me. Walling is when you shove someone up against a wall, but it's a special wall designed so that there is a plank of plywood in front and a flimsy wall behind it. So when you shove someone against the wall, the two walls move around and bang together. The subject becomes confused and thinks that something is wrong with the wall that they're being shoved against, and they worry the wall might break, and it makes them nervous. And the interrogator knows there's nothing wrong with the wall, and it's supposed to be that way, but the subject doesn't know that. Can you imagine the CEO of BlackRock Financial getting the wall treatment? Please, sir, I need to speak to a manager. There's something wrong with the wall. Yeah, buddy, something is wrong with the wall. That's the point. It's torture. Ha! Ah! Put the super rich in some stress positions, they could use the exercise, it's like yoga. It's revenge for all the yoga we've had to do to endure them. The most abstract torture is called the frequent flyer program, where you subject people to sleep deprivation just by moving them around between different rooms a lot. Sounds like the housing market. Bureaucratic reorganization is usually torture, so naturally the CIA weaponized it. Always make sure you put them in a head bag so they can't see or know where they are just to make the bourgeoisie extra helpless and confused like they deserve to be. In Iran, they put you in a room where everything is the color white, and you apparently go insane. So after the revolution, we have to remember to include some white paint in the torture budget. The one thing we should not do is put electrodes on people's genitals like the American military did in Iraq. We don't have to stoop as low as the American government. Remember, we're monsters, not fascists. Now, comedy can be used for good or evil. I prefer both. There's no punchlines in this routine. The joke is me saying out loud what everyone wants. I have gestures privilege. I can say anything because I'm someone important. It doesn't matter what I say. Sometimes when I'm writing, I try to concoct clever wordplay, but just always end up with more bitter sarcasm against the social order. Now, my comedy is a little bit truth, a little bit zany humor, observational and farcical. So, for example, advocating torture of the 1% is a bit gonzo, but it's also, you know, what should happen. The rhythm of this routine is meant to alternate back and forth between the theory and practice of torturing the super wealthy. Writing this was exhausting. I had to listen to meditation music just to get through it. 
to study for this routine, I watched some Hannibal Lecter horror movies, a little bit of Hellraiser, but mostly just George Carlin and Wikipedia. Now, from the 1960s to the 1980s, the CIA carried out Operation Condor in South America, a continent-wide program of repressing socialist activists, frequently using electrical torture. And they're giving me ideas. I think we need an Operation Condor against the super-rich. But hey, we should probably call it something else. The next evolution in music is going to be strapping the wealthy down and seeing what noises they make when we electrocute them. Now, I'm just trying to keep up with the Generation Z trends. And Generation Z, you know, has very fickle tastes. They like TikTok clips and they like the screams of the wealthy. Now, I can only do one of those things. I just don't have the TikTok magic. It's time every red-blooded American invested in an extra car battery. The point is to learn through practice after all. Electrocuting the bourgeoisie isn't terrorism, it's patriotism. Up the voltage, I want to smell that bacon cooking. The worst electrical torture is having to help someone else navigate a computer program, a uh, computer problem, over the phone without being able to see their screen, which is the torture they put you through when you work at the technical help desk, known among staff as the hell desk. Cold War electrical torture involved a cattle prod. Now electrical torture is too many notifications. Get the phones away from me, I'd rather take the cattle prod. For the ruling class, we have to get creative. Uh, ordinary rending of the flesh is not painful enough. We need the pain to go straight into their neurons. We need like an altered carbon style torture simulation, like a Hannibal Lecter matrix constructed specifically for the bourgeoisie. The torture against the ruling class has got to be digitized or it's not enough. The closest we can currently have to this is electrical torture, but no, we need cyberpunk brain ports to torture the super wealthy like they deserve. We have to turn all their thoughts and memories into a horror movie inversion of themselves, as all their neurons' action potentials overflow simultaneously and the vinyl record of their brain <laughs> flips over to the B-side of their repressed self-doubts, bursting through their egos like a flood breaking through a dam. You can tell I'm invested in this. Obviously, neuroelectric torture is the only way the super-wealthy will ever feel shame. Trying to shame the super-wealthy without neuroelectric assistance is like trying to educate a brick wall. We all know that torturing the ruling class is therapy and self-care. What does the ruling class value more, its bank accounts or its fingernails? They're so open-minded if you just know how to ask them. You ask them with pliers. Comrades, we must crush the wealthy. We must crush the ruling class. We must crush them beneath our boots. We must crush them beneath the gears of our machines. We must crush them like we are Judge Dredd. There's a technical difference between oppression and repression. They're both when you crack down on somebody, but oppression is when it's morally wrong and undeserved. Repression is morally neutral, it could be right or wrong. So when the wealthy torture us, it's oppression. But when we torture them, it's a repression, key distinction. We have to shred the super rich into itty bitty teeny weeny baby bibby bitty bites. I'm reduced to the depravity of silly baby talk. That's what it takes to agitate you all into finally rising against our corporate overlords. I must make silly baby talk to describe the ferocity with which we must struggle. What we really need is an industrial shredder. Now, you can't technically fit a rich person in a wood chipper unless you chop them up first like Fargo. But the whole point is to witness them being shredded while alive and intact so you can witness them feeling it. You can watch online videos of people throwing objects into these things and industrial shredders and just getting crushed to pieces with the debris erupting upward out of the rotating jaws and fountains. I just think it's not right that these things are only used on objects and not on people. I don't want to see the debris splashing out of them. I want to see the splashing blood and organs of the global financial class. When we finally need to break the ruling class mentally, I know exactly what to do. After my decades of suffering on this wretched sphere called Earth, I have finally perfected the ultimate form of torture. It's that corporate jingle they repeat every time you change YouTube videos. Right when Jeff Bezos is finally on the edge of losing his lunch and caving to our demands, when his head is wobbling, his brain chemistry is scrambled, his appendages are bloody stumps, and the halls echo with his wailing and his groans, I'm going to look right in his eyes with the kind of personal confrontation of eye contact between torturer and tortured, in which the tortured attempts to ascertain whether the torturer has any remaining mercy. And in that moment, I will say, Liberty Mutual lets you customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Because after all, if comedy is torture, then torture is comedy.